one of our regular guests, one of our favorites to say the least, longtime friend of any program that I've been a part of. He is UCLA head coach Jim Morrow. Good to see you. Great to see you, Rich. When was the last time you got a call about Hunley from an NFL team? When you know, I've time? spoken to a, a whole bunch of teams. Yep. And uh, two weeks ago, four or five team, teams came out and worked him out, brought the GMs and head coaches, quarterback coaches. And uh, he's had a really productive pre-draft time. I mean, he's been uh, outstanding in the classroom with them. He's thrown the ball well on the field. I think he's erased maybe some of the questions they so might have about him. Why do people have a problem buying? Uh, I on think there's him. a couple things. Number one, you know, we we usually operated out of the shotgun, so there's some question whether or not he could operate from under center, and so they put him through a lot of drills, and he's done very very well with that. Um, you know, they had questions about his taking sacks. You know, we we were one of the top most sack teams in the uh -huh. country. A lot of that has to do with the fact that we run the, the zone read, so it looks like it might be a pass, but it's a run. If he gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage, they count it as a sack. Mm -hmm. um, and then just processing, processing the information quickly enough to deliver the ball on time, on target every time. Mm -hmm. And I think that the way that he's worked through this early spring is he's erased a lot of those questions, and he's just such a great, amazing person and his character shines through and that's what they love. We had your crosstown colleague, Coach Sarkeesian, on the show the other day. Okay, how'd he do? Well, I mentioned to him about, you know, Mariota and some people mm -hmm. thinking he might not be pro ready and it, I, it, I touched a nerve because he said essentially, like what you just said about Hunley and the question about him, it's just, it's sort of hypocritical because of the number of plays being run at the NFL level by people like, say, oh, Tom Brady. Right. That look just like the offenses that Mariota can run in shotgun. Yeah. And he had a, he basically said that the NFL is being hypocritical when it comes to kids like yours in regards to you Brett know, Hundley. I don't know that the decision makers are being hypocritical. I think some of the pundits are being, you know, the, the people that the draft and analyzers are being a little hypocritical. Mm -hmm. When I was in the NFL, um, you didn't necessarily look at a guy and, and evaluate what type of system he came out of. You said, can the guy play football? Can he process information? Does he have the, the physical attributes to play at the next level? Mm -hmm. um, to me, when you look at a guy like Brett, you look at Marcus, uh, I mean, they're big, they're fast, they're physical, they've got lively arms, they're smart, they're great decision makers. Uh, it doesn't matter whether or not they took a snap from center or not. Because as you just said, Tom Brady, how many times we see Tom under center? maybe, what, 10% of, right. of each game. Right. Uh, so if there are skills that need to be taught, I think they've demonstrated that they can learn them and they can perform them well at a high level. And, uh, you know, the NFL puts such a premium on character, as they should. So when you're talking about a guy like Brett or a guy like Mariota, you're talking about the highest level of character that you can find in college football. These are princes of men and you'd just be so lucky to have guys like that in your in your franchise. And yet the guy's number one overall is a guy with some questions on that particular front. Mm -hmm. And Jameis Winston, you said back in December when I first asked you this very subject, the question on this very subject about Mariota or mm -hmm. Winston, you said the Bucks should write down Mariota's name and hand in the card now. I feel that way still. You do? Absolutely. So you I, think the Bucks are making a mistake, conversely? Well, they haven't made it yet. Understood. But uh, it, I just... You know, I played against, we got to play against him, so I got to see him up close and personal. I've gotten to know him a little bit, and I just have real conviction about this young man. I think he's a special, special person, a special, special talent. You know, I think that the, I, I was lucky to work for Bill Walsh, and you know, we'd say that he's one of the all-time quarterback gurus. And the things that Bill emphasized, I see in Marcus. And the number one attribute that Bill always talked about is your quarterback has to be a great decision maker. And to me, decision making is not only on the field, but it's the way you carry yourself off the field, especially at that position. And when you look at Marcus, you see a guy that does it right. You know, off the field, he's, uh, he's a great leader. He's got integrity. Uh, on the field, he doesn't throw interceptions. You know, he's not loose with the football. Uh, conversely, with Jameis, there have been some issues that we all know about. You know, he has thrown some interceptions. I don't think you can deny the talent. And I think that he's done an amazing job in the last couple of months of kind of rehabilitating his image. He's saying the right things, he's doing the right things, but I just think he still has to prove it to a lot of us that, that he's turning into the guy that he's acting as right now. Mm, and in that regard, I mean, you've been on this side of the evaluation wall. Your dad, yeah. with number one overall pick, he's told stories about even though the Ryan Leaf evaluation raised a ton of red flags, mm -hmm. they still grinded tape on him versus Peyton to the end. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going on 
in Tampa right now, three days before the draft with this big decision? Well, well my opinion, what I would think, just based upon my experience being in those draft rooms, is that they're still debating the issue. Now, they might have conviction one way or the other. It might be a big smoke screen. Maybe they're gonna take someone that none of us have talked about. I doubt it. But I'm sure that they are right now, their NFL security is probably still investigating both Winston and Mariota. No kidding. Uh, oh, no, I got a call uh, last week from NFL security about a player that used to play at UCLA that's now in the draft, you know, just asking background questions. So, and this is a guy that, that probably won't get drafted. And so with a guy like, with Marcus and, and Jameis, those high profile guys, I mean, they're gonna go back into high school, they're gonna go back and, and really dig up anything they can find. And well, how it, much is too much though, right? Well, I, you know, that's the interesting part of, uh, of the draft process is we, we build these kids up to this certain level and then we spend a couple months right before the draft, you know, talking about what they can't do. You know, these are the things that he can't, we tear them back down and then we build them back up. And I think this is a really difficult time for the player, you know, in dealing with Brett, um, just watching him go through uh, the process of being criticized hmm. for his performance after he's done so many wonderful things at UCLA. And I've told him, I said, this is just a part of the process. This is the teardown process. This is when people are looking for your faults. They're really looking for reasons not to draft you. That doesn't mean they're not gonna draft you, but they wanna, they wanna know exactly what they're getting. And uh, you know, we all know what you are, but they're trying to find out what you aren't. And you just have to, you have to roll with it. And once you get drafted, then they're going to build you back up again. I'm here with Jim Moore, UCLA head football coach on the Rich Eisen Show. So Hunley has knocked on your, your door or mm -hmm. called you up and said, man, this is a bummer at some point. Uh, I, mean, he's, he's, a, like, I talk to him, probably, I see him, you know, almost every day. Mm -hmm. He's at UCLA working out. So I see him almost every day. And the, the thing that's incredible about Brett is his attitude. Because he has been ripped apart a little bit. And yet, he's incredibly positive about the whole process. You know, he says, God, it's tough. I mean, some of these questions they're asking me and some of the things that I hear and I read, and I say, well, just tune out the noise. You know who you are. We know who you are. They're learning who you are. I told Brett from the very start that, you know, any of these people that criticized him as a player, once they got in a room with him and they sat down with him and they learned the type of kid that he was and the mm -hmm. work ethic and, and I said his integrity and his character, that they'd fall in love with him. And I think that's what's happening. Then they take him out on Spalding Field and they see him zinging it around and they go, Dang, you know, this is a guy we want to have, you mm -hmm. know, and I think there's a lot of teams that are very, very interested. I think he's kind of a, I don't know if you call him a sleeper because he's not really a sleeper, but he's under the radar a little bit. I think, I think he's a hidden gem. I'm here with uh, Jim Mora. We're going to take a break. We come back. I'll ask you point blank where you think he's going to go. Okay. Okay. And also uh, some other issues that are going on uh, in the football world. And also uh, who's the next quarterback at UCLA? I, 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 I expect half an answer to that. Half. I'll give you half. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll give you a quarter. And answer. Rick Carlisle's tape is nowhere to be found. So you can't use that <laughs> as an excuse. Use the tape. Nope. We're back with uh, Jim Mora here on the Rich Eisen Show in one minute's time. Stop overpaying for razors with so much shave technology. DollarShaveClub.com delivers amazing razors and grooming supplies right to my door for a couple of bucks. Shave time, shave money, upgrade to DollarShaveClub.com. That's DollarShaveClub.com. It will be an integral part of my draft week as this baby face will be on TV way too much starting Tuesday all the way through to Saturday on NFL Network. Do you want to update the poll question uh, for Coach here? Sure. Do you think Kelly Olenek's play on Kevin Love was dirty? Coach, did you see it? Did you see any? Well, you Kevin see? is a UCLA guy, so I'm going to have to say absolutely <laughs> dirty. <laughs> well, 60% of our listeners agree I didn't even with you. see it. <laughs> that, did, that, that answer deserves an eight clap. There you go. That's for sure. Do you uh, know the eight clap? Do I know it? Yeah. Well, I'm not allowed to do it in public. So, yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. I know of it. But yeah. here, here for here the uh, radio audience, for showing his coach, you know, he just gave an extra yank there. You know, that's playoff basketball. You know, it gets yeah, a little that sounds physical. Like a no. Are you going? To, are you going to any of the Clipper games? You know what? I'm going tomorrow night. I'm you sitting are. on the floor right next to the Clippers bench. I think that I'll be sitting right next to Doc. Oh, is that right? And if he needs any uh, advice, I'll be whispering in his ear. But <laughs> would be a real doomsday. How would you, how would you be as an NBA coach? with the refs standing oh, right God. there. I, I mean, you know what I mean? I would need a tape, okay? They'd have to wrap it all the way around my <laughs> like head. Like a mummy? Yes, <laughs> that's how I'd be. <laughs> because you, because you, you sometimes, I mean, you got the side judge right there. That yeah. guy gets an earful. Yeah. But sometimes you've got to get the, the ref yeah. over, the, the actual ref, you got to get the attention, yeah. right? Yeah, I've had a couple of experiences with the officials. I had a great one in Chicago when I was with Atlanta and it was Jerry Seaman's son. 
and we were playing a Monday night game, uh -huh. and uh, replay came through, and they ruled against us, and I was convinced that it was a bad call, and I just, I just, t I, I stood there and I said, you might as well just drop the flag, because I'm not getting off this field until you penalize me, because I was trying to make a statement, and then I kept going at him, going at him, going at him, and uh, and I was kind of egging him on, like, well, how do you feel about that call? How do you feel about that call? Because it was a bad call, and he finally turns, he says, I feel every time you open your mouth, I feel a lot better about it. You know, it's just great. So did you get I got flag? the flag. Oh, you did get the flag. I got the flag. I, I wanted the flag, though. I had to have the flag. See, that sounds like something out of out of a movie where it's just like, throw me out. You know, just throw me well, out. Well, I know. Just, I didn't want to get thrown no, out. No, no, that, I, I know that's a different story. It was like you had to make that statement for your team at some point that you're sticking up for them. Right. You know, that you that you got their back. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I mean, what, what if the NBA, NFL allowed, like, Major League Baseball, that you're allowed mm -hmm. to go on the field of play yeah, and just like yell directly yeah. at the umpire's face? No, I think the NFL has done a great job of minimizing the confrontations between officials and head coaches. And Since they Bill find Coward, head coaches right? at the drop of a dime. There's words that you can't say. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that's good. I think... You know, we're on TV, and kids are watching, and there's this thing called integrity and sportsmanship, and, and yeah, it's high rot, and there's emotion and passion and intensity, and you're trying to win, and it's your livelihood, but at the same time, you've got to be respectful, mm -hmm. and uh, that's something I've gotten a lot, but I'm not good at it. <laughs> I'm not good at it, but I'm better than I was. Well, when you mentioned Bill Cower Law, you're talking about that Ben Dreif moment, or was that who the referee took the, he took the Polaroid and jammed took the it Polaroid, right yeah. into his shirt yeah. pocket? Well, you would always now, see him at the, at the hash mark almost spitting in someone's face, but then... <laughs> then but taking the, the Polaroid and saying, this is how you blew it, and just jamming it. That, that's, now that's now it's 21st line. century, it's taking a tablet and showing you, the, you know. Yeah, the tablet. I always like the Jerry Glanville, you know what the NFL stands for, not for long if yeah. you're making calls like that. That's great. Others. It's an old time great. great ones. And Bum Phillips always had good ones. I'm here with Jim Mora, head coach of UCLA on the Rich Eisen Show. So where do you think Brett Hundley's gonna go when it's all said and done? Rich, I think he's gonna go to team or round. What do you want? How about both, if you're willing to give okay, both? Okay, I'm gonna say he's gonna go in the second round mm -hmm. to either the Dallas Cowboys, the San Diego Chargers, or the Arizona Cardinals, because they all have quarterbacks that are a little bit up there in age that are not yet ready to turn over the reins to somebody, and I think that those would be perfect situations for Brett, where he can go in and he can learn from Tony Romo, or he can learn from Phillip Rivers, you know? Or uh, he can learn Carson from that Palmer. USC guy. No, you can't even say the name. I can't even say it. You know, or, <laughs> sure. or maybe maybe the Rams. Uh, uh -huh. You know, somewhere that that he can grow up like quarterbacks used to be able to grow up. You know, where you sat behind a good player and you learned the system and you learned the game and uh, and then when you were handed the keys of the car, you were m mentally prepared, you were physically prepared, emotionally prepared. I'd love to see that for Brett. I think that would would provide him the best avenue for long-term long success in the NFL. And Arians would be a guy that that he'd fit? I Hunter think Bruce, fit. yeah, Bruce is, you know, I've worked with Bruce, and he's a, an amazing guy, and, you know, it's just his sense of humor and his patience, and he's been with great quarterbacks. He understands the position. I think sure. he'd be good. I'm here with Jim Moore uh, here on the Rich Eisen Show. So your quarterback, you've got uh, a decision to make at some point. You just... You just broke your spring practice in a way yep. without naming one. Right. There is Josh Rosen, we all know. He's a highly touted individual. Yeah. Uh, why, why did you go ahead and, and break for spring without naming anybody? Well, I, I, I covet competition, you know, and uh, I want to see all four of the quarterbacks that are on our roster, you know, competing for that job. We have a couple more, uh, but four that are really in competition continue to stay in competition. And I don't think that anyone has distinguished themselves enough yet that warrants being named a starter. So mm -hmm. I think it's just best for our program, best for our team, best for the individual player to continue to compete. And uh, it'll make us a better team. You know, I want to see them earn it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to hand the job to anybody. Let her, make them earn it. And I'd like to ask you about uh, or one of your recruits, uh, who's... So-so. Yes, so-so. Yeah, so, I beat so. you to the punch there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. So-so... Uh, uh, We're going negative now, huh? No, well, look, you know, I'm part of the paparazzi <laughs> here, and I want to ask you about this this young man who was uh, arrested, um, uh, charges of fleeing police in a vehicle and drinking alcohol. What what what, what can you tell me about his status with the team and what about Well, he about wasn't this? drinking alcohol. Okay. First of all, I don't have all the facts. Um, okay. What I do know is that he was initially brought up on six charges. By the end of the day, it was down to one, which was fleeing police. It was his prom night, and I'm sure that there were some uh, less than great decisions being made. I can tell you he's a, he's a great kid. He's a wonderful kid. He hadn't had any problems in the past. I support him. We support him. Um, but we have to leave it up to the authorities to decide what the, what the process is going to be. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that it does is it teaches 
it taught our kids on our team a great lesson is that no matter who you are, where you are, if you're a college athlete or professional athlete, you are under the spotlight. You are under scrutiny at all times. This is a high school senior whose news went national, you know, and all people are going to remember is that uh, he was brought up on six charges, which is not true. It was one. You know, if he's exonerated, it won't matter. Oh, he was the kid arrested. Yeah. So uh, it's all about decision making. So anytime something like that happens, to me, it's a teachable moment for our players. And we talk about it. And this is a flag. Happened. This is a flag that if his career goes as you hope at UCLA and he shows up in Indianapolis at a combine, they will ask about we'll, it. We'll be, and I'll be talking about it with and Mayock sitting on the on you, the set. Yes, you will. And and NFL security will be calling the police in in Texas and saying, "Tell us what happened." So so senior year of high school. Exactly what were the details? And that's the scrutiny that you're under now. I'm here with Jim Mora uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Your annual Celebrity Golf Classic is coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, the count on me tomorrow.org uh, is how people can go. Is, no, 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 count on me found, on me foundation. Foundation. Org. Yeah, there that's my, go, that's my chicken scratch. You count on me the, foundation. You were in the inaugural, org. you know. I know. Back, back at in Sugarloaf in Atlanta. In Atlanta, and yeah. a certain uh, a coach's dad mm -hmm. uh, ended up winning. <laughs> And yeah, he's, I think he's won them all. He won. And I Nine walked, in a row. I walked up to your dad after the <laughs> original Count On Me Foundation uh, charity tournament, the, the Celebrity Golf Classic, and I went up to your dad and I asked to see his pencil <laughs> and, and the checked the eraser <laughs> on it. And the look that your dad gave me, <laughs> he was legitimately pissed that I would question his integrity and in scoring. Yeah. Out there on the golf course. I think that, that he, happened. I think that his, he's gotten older. I think he's a man of great integrity, but when yes. he's on the golf course, I think there maybe are just some really? little kinks and slipping. Kinks in the, uh, maybe a little. The Don is slipping a little well, bit. Well, the dude likes to win now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little he's hand wedge. Competitor. Huh? Right. So, but he'll be out. It's the ninth annual. It's May 18th at the Riv. At the uh, Riv at Riviera Country Club out yeah, here. We've sold it out again for. We still got some sponsorships available. Whole okay. sponsors. And so people can go again to CountOnMeFoundation.org. Dot org, yeah. To figure out how to be part yeah, of this. Yeah, it's a great event. Do you need you any like caddies, Coach? Involved. What's that? Any you, caddies for the event? Caddy. Yeah, we'll take you. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, there'll be a pond. <laughs> at cool. Riviera, pond, that's for you. Be good for you. Yeah, the pond will be good for you. Unbelievable. There's a Riviera pond. It's a great course. Good for you. That's please. I mean, it's just, it doesn't get it's, more oh, legendary so than that. Beautiful. Well, man, look, thanks for coming in here. I appreciate you giving me all your. Uh, that's some interesting three teams you throw out there for Hundley. And the second round. So Friday night, when the when the Cowboys, Chargers, and or Cardinals are on the clock, keep, Maybe keep the Rams that in, too. Or the Rams, keep yeah. that in a mind's eye. That's you know that's you never know. The draft is such a fluid. As you know, it's yeah. a fluid event. It changes by the minute. When somebody makes a decision, it changes the whole dynamic of the draft. And the next person makes a decision, it changes the whole dynamic again. But I those are the teams I'd like to see him go to because I think they'd give him the best chance to have long-term success. And you think Winston goes one? I do. Yeah, done? I do. I and what about Mariota? Where do you think I he goes? I hope he goes number two. But where do you think? I think just from know, what you're hearing, Tennessee, reading, you know? Huh? Ten, a year Tennessee. You think so? Oh, so, so Wisenhunt, because you know he loves those. You know, Kurt Warner, he loves those older guys. Ben, the veterans. I know, but but you know, Marcus is an old soul. And the thing about Marcus is, is he gets the ball out of his hand so quickly. And I think that Ken likes that as well. Right. You know, he likes guys that are good decision makers. And Chip Kelly, what do you think? Um, do you think he does anything? I think it's interesting with Chip. I, I you know he could be playing it real close to the vest, playing possum, and maybe he slips up there and tries to get Marcus. I mean, it would, it would be the perfect fit. Yeah. You talk about a great dynamic now, putting those two back together again at oh, this level. Yeah. And and he could be mentored by Tebow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love Tim. I didn't mean that as a No, big no, Tim. I know that. Tim's nope. the best. <laughs> it is, I know. I know, because everybody look, and and bottom line is this about Tebow. Okay. Is he kept to his guns and kept working out and kept going out and he's got his whatever you reason he he, he was taken on by Chip Kelly, he got it done. He's he he's is back. He is in the NFL right now. Well. Is he in the NFL or is he on an NFL roster? <laughs> I don't think you're in the NFL until week one. <laughs> That's why I love having you on here. Okay. Coach, thanks for coming right, in. Rich. You bet. Countonmefoundation.org is how you can get involved with the Mora Celebrity Golf Classic. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.